Hello, my name is Carlo Bergamini, Senior Consultant here at Western Computer. In this video, we're going to talk about AP electronic payments. So with electronic payments, there are a few setups that need to be accomplished for it to work properly. I'm going to start off with the bank accounts. So if I go into my bank account, I'm going to choose which bank account am I actually going to issue electronic payments out of. In this case, I'm going to use my checking account. First thing you need to do is you need to put in your bank account number. And if I scroll down to my transfer tab, you also need to put in your bank account transit number. Obviously, when you create this file and we send it to the bank, the bank needs to know what transit and bank account number it's going to pull the money out of. Hence, that's why we need to fill in those two fields. We also need to tell it which export format that we want to use. And this refers to data exchanges that if you've seen one of my prior videos specifically talking about data exchanges, you get a little bit more detail on how you could create and modify such files. On the bank account record that you're on, the system needs to know which data exchange, what format do you want the file to spit out when we're done with this process? Because at the very end, it's one of the very last steps is to finally generate that electronic file so you could send it to the bank. So the system needs to know what data exchange, what file layout do we want to use? And we could have a series of a few of them, but we need to decide which one it is. In this case, I'm just going to use the US EFT default. I'm going to jump back up here in the last remittance advice field. This is like a alphanumeric or just numeric number of reference field. And it's basically like a reference to your remittance advice. Remittance advices are confirmations of payments that you could send to your vendors. You don't have to send it, but the process will force you to print those out for you. And you either could save them onto your hard drive or network, or you could actually send them to your vendors for confirmation of payments. And this could be anything. In my example, I just did an EFT. So if I want to start over, whether some people refer to ACH, I could do ACH01 to start off to say my remittance advice will be ACH01. Or maybe it's remit01. You want to have some kind of numeric value at the end because so, it's going to increment by one every time you print out one. So whatever you use as the alpha, you want to have a numeric at the end, i.e. remit01. Account number, transit number, remittance advice, and your payment export format. And again, reference back to data exchange video that I did prior. So that's the setups within the bank account record. And of course, I'm assuming we're all US, but needless to say, I'm gonna go back one space. The country export format, which basically relates to my payment export format here, you also need to establish whether it is U.S. version, Canadian version, or Mexican. In our case, it's going to be U.S. So that is one other field you may want to pay attention to. Now, I need to go to the vendor card because just as I updated our bank account information so the bank knows where to pull the money out of, the bank also needs to know where to put the money into when we send this file. So every vendor that you want to pay as electronically, then you need to go to that specific vendor and update that vendor with their transit number and bank account number. So on the vendor card that I'm on now, I'm going to go to navigate vendor bank accounts. And you see I have one right here. And all I really need is to put a code in. And again, it could be numeric, it could be alphanumeric, whatever you want it to be, but it needs a code to identify itself. So I just put a simple one. I did WWI for worldwide imports. And all these other fields are address fields, contact information. These are optional. You don't need to put them in there, but the more information, the better. In my case, all I needed was the name, my bank account number here, and my transit number here. Once I have that information in there, this is a mandatory field that you need to populate for it to work. When you first create one, it's always going to be off. And what this is is used for electronic payments. So this automatically is off because you could create all your information, but maybe the vendor's not ready to use the electronic payment. They sent you the information, but they probably said, hey, don't use it yet. 
So when they give you the go-ahead to start using it, then you just come to this record and say, yeah, turn it on. And now from this point forward, you can now create electronic payments to this vendor's bank account information. Going back on the same master record of that vendor record, because before I was in the vendor's bank account card, now I'm on just a regular vendor card that it came from. And if I scroll down, I also have this one field within the payment section a preferred bank account number. So in case they have multiple vendor bank accounts, they may have more than one. And if they do, you could specify which one. Because here, if I do a drop down, you see it's only one. But if they have two different banks and they say, hey, most of the time I want you to use the first one that I gave you, but there may be times as I want you to send the payment to the other bank account. So you have those options to flip flop back and forth. But in this case, this is gonna be like your default that you're gonna use all the time on a default matter. So when I run my payment journal, this is gonna default into the payments being my first one, number one. Now my vendor is ready to work with electronic payments. Again, if I don't set this up, it's not gonna work for that vendor. So now let's go into payment journals. And if you saw my prior video on AP check payments, the process is very similar with just a couple small tweaks. So I'm gonna to go to cash management, payment journals, I'm gonna select which batch I wanna use. The reason for batches, as a reminder, is it just segregates and separates the type of entries. In this case, I have three different batches for three different purposes. So if I was a company that did AP payment checks, I maybe wanna have a batch that's called AP checks, and then have another batch called EFT, and maybe have another batch called wires. A suggestion, not necessary, it's whatever you feel is proper. You could just use one batch for all purposes. It just keeps it cleaner if you want to separate it. So I'm going to go into my payment batch. And just like we did AP payments, I'm going to go to prepare, suggest vendor payments. What's this do? It actually tells the system, suggests what payments that are open for you to pay based on a date. So suggest vendor payments. And I'm going to go right down to my last payment date here. I'm telling the system to go out through September 10th and pull in anything that's due to be paid up through this date. For today, it's 831, but I'm going to go out 10 days in the future. So that way, maybe my next check run isn't until the 9th or the 10th. So I wanted to bring in everything through that date. So everything that's due through this date that you specify. I'm gonna skip down a little bit. What I do want for sure is summarize per vendor. This is typically shut off when you do AP check payments, but when it comes to wires or electronic payments, you wanna turn this on because you want the system to summarize the total. And by summarizing, meaning if I have three open invoices and all invoices are $1,000 each, it's gonna bring in a total of $3,000 that you're paying your vendor. Because it's ACH, EFTs, you don't want to bring in three individual 1,000 payments. You want to make it one lump sum, $3,000. System still knows what it's paying, which invoices it's paying, and it will apply it correctly. But as far as the electronic transfer, you want it to transfer a total of $3,000 instead of three separate $1,000. So you want that turned on. Posting date is the payment date. So this is the date that you expected to come out of your bank and it's gonna hit your trial balance in Business Central based on this date. Your starting document number is your payment reference number. It's like your check number, if you will. It's your payment reference number. So if I was doing EFT, I would do EFT, let's just say 001. Scrolling down a little bit more. What bank account am I going to cut the EFT out of? For the payment type, we don't want a computer check. That was in prior videos. That's going to print out a check. A manual check is for wires, or if you ask for, for some reason, if you do still have manual checks, it's a way of recording your payment. And then we get the electronic payments, and that's what we want to choose for this right now. I'm going to click OK. Set it created payments. And you'll see there's three lines that it found, three different vendors it found. But you notice two of the three vendors don't have a recipient bank account, whereas this is my only vendor that has a bank account card associated to them. 
So because I didn't set a filter on specific types of vendors, it brought in all my vendors. It brought in everything, whether it's a cash payment vendor or a electronic vendor. And there's ways of filtering that out. We'll talk about that in future sessions. But for now, because it doesn't have a bank account reference to that vendor, I'm going to actually delete the lines out. So I'm just going to delete that. And if you recall in my prior video, by deleting these out, you're only deleting it out in this batch. You're not deleting it out of the system. It's just out of this payment journal. So next time you do a payment run, those vendor open invoices will reappear. So you're not deleting anything out of the system. You're just deleting out of your journal, which is basically just a work template that you're verifying what kind of payments you want to be made. So now we're good. So now we're saying, okay, I got my vendor. I got my vendor's bank account. I got my document number EFT002. I could rename this if I want to. Maybe I want something different, ACH001. I can do that. The document number can't be changed once you do a remittance advice and transfer and create that file. But before then, you could change just about anything in this journal. You could change the document number. You could change the bank account if the vendor has more than one. You could change the payment amount if you want to short pay. Maybe you don't want to pay the full 23000 Maybe you want to short pay it. You could change that. But everything looks good from there. Now I'm going to go to bank, export, and this is going to create that remittance advice that I referred to. So a window pops up, just verifying, yes, I'm cutting out of the checking account. How many copies do I want if I want multiple copies? Do I want to print a company address? And then the output method, do I want to just print it out? Do I just want to see it? Do I want to save it, email it? Etc. So I'm just going to use PDF, click OK, and now I could just save it onto my hard drive or my network somewhere. And this is what it would look like. So remittance advice, which again is like a check stub, if you will, a confirmation of payment that's hey, I'm paying you vendor of 23,127, and here's a list of all the invoices that I'm paying. You could send this to your vendor or not, it's up to you, but the system will want you to print them out. Now that I have the remittance advice printed and saved, then I could go to actions, functions, generate EFT file. And this is what's actually going to create that file that you send to the bank. So another window pops up. And if there's multiple batches that you have, like throughout the day, maybe you did multiple batches, not often, but from time to time I've seen it. But most of the time you're going to have one batch per day or per week and you should only see that total bank. Now this is only because of one payment, but this would list out all the different document numbers and amounts you're paying. So it's like one last verification before you actually generate that EFT file. So it's telling you what you're about to generate. So I'm gonna go up to here, generate EFT file. And now what it just did is it actually created down below, and I'm gonna use Notepad because it created a text file. So the best way to open a text file is notepad. And you'll see here's the actual file that got auto-generated. And this is the file that you're going to send to the bank. Now keep in mind, I'm using a standard default file. And it's up to you to create using data exchanges how the file will appear. You're going to map field by field specific information that matches and what the bank is expecting you to send. So you take this file, you save it on your network or your local drive, and then from there you upload it to the bank. Now that that's done, the last step would be to post it. Because again, you see, just because I generated a file, I created remittance advice, I generated the file to send to the bank, but the information is still here because now I need to post it so that way it actually impacts my trial balance. It closes out your vendor invoices, affects your AP, update your accounts payable GL. If I do post, it's just going to post it. If I do post and print, that's going to actually post it and print out a register. In this case, I'm just going to post it. I click yes, successfully posted, and now the information is now gone. That completes the process of electronic payments. Thank you for spending some time watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and stay up to date on all things Microsoft Dynamics. Feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Thanks again.